What is up guys? Welcome to another video. I hope that you guys are all doing good. In this video, a I don't know if she's a scientist or if she is just a YouTuber, she's breaking down Terence Howard one times one equals two whole theory. So without further ado guys, let's get straight into today's video and don't forget to like, comment and share because it helps us out in the algorithm. Today I want to talk about a peculiar case of, let me call it amateur physics, that's recently attracted okay. a lot of public attention. It's some ideas put forward by Terence Howard, an American actor who has his own theory of everything that he thinks improves physics. Okay. Now, there are thousands of people with theories of something that aren't good for anything. And this is my biggest problem with physics. Most of these theories are just theories. Most of physics is just theories. We do not know definitively. There are certain things that we do know definitively, like what a microwave works. Uh, we've got cameras. That I would have to say it's physics and then the internet. But apart from that, there are things that we do not know. So I'm like, all of these are just theories. So at the end of the day, you can't definitively say that it is or it isn't. I don't talk about that. I make an exception in this case because Joe Rogan spread these ideas on his podcast. And a lot of people seem to think that physicists must pay attention to actors who want to improve physics. Well, I'm happy to help. So let's have a look. I don't have time to listen to three hour podcasts. And if I did, I sure as hell wouldn't listen to some actor go on about his theory of everything. But I saw that he has a book of sorts and I like books. So I had a look at this and I'm now at least as qualified to comment on his ideas as he is to comment on modern physics. Terence Howard's key fundamental insight, the basis of his new theory of everything, is that one times one equals two. Just in case you had any doubts about it, one times one equals one. That's not a matter of opinion. It's not even a matter of science. It's a matter of definition. The mathematical operation that we call multiplication and the number that we call one are defined so that any number multiplied by one. Kind of feels like people like this, they're still stuck on this is what I was taught in school and this is how it is, right? And yes, there are certain things that you can take from school. That's what I'm I usually say what you take 50%, but then the rest you can throw away because these are theories we do not know. Now, why are you so married to these theories? Like there are certain physicists which are so married, like, no, Einstein said this, Newton said this. Yes, he did say that, but there's, there's things that we do not know. Like when you look at what these UFOs and the way that they're moving, says something about physics. There's certain pockets in physics which we have no clue. But maybe they're thinking from a three-dimensional way. They're counting in three dimensionals and we're still on the linear way of calculating. So I like the way Terence Howard is trying to kind of like branch out out of this like shell which you're in or this box. And this is a problem with physics nowadays. You have people which are, they refuse to divorce or even throw away certain things. Modern day physics is like a hoarder. He's just grabbing a bunch of things and then when you come into his apartment, it's just filled with a bunch of junk, right? There was this documentary which I was watching of this hoarder which hoarded so much that the junk collapsed on him or the junk fell on him and he died. So I say that to say like we need to just let go of some of this. Like why are we still trying to take rocket ships up? Why? For what reason? Like, I don't know. It's just the way that I'm viewing it, at least. I think there, there should be some form of, as Terence said, an audit. Let's audit everything. Let's go through everything 
and say, do we actually need that? Because it feels like we're traveling in space with a bunch of junk. And you're just like, you can't get rid of 70% of this junk. Most of it is just like people throwing in their junk as well. And then it's like this convoluted thing. And physics is not supposed to be that. It's supposed to be the theory that works. Everyone comes with their theories and whichever theory that works, we take that one. One gives the same number. Consequently, one times one equals one. We define multiplication this way just because it's useful. You see, if you have only addition and I give you seven apples, you'd have to go one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one, plus one equals seven. Mm. The operation of multiplication is a way to simplify this long sequence of addition. Okay. We introduce a new symbol, call that times, and write seven times one. It means the same thing. Howard goes on to write, in order to multiply something by something else, they must be dimensionally equal. This is not correct. If you multiply one quantity that has units with another quantity that has units, you multiply the units. If I multiply, say, time measured in seconds with a speed in meters per second, I get a length in meters. This is the case for any quantity, but a lot of things that you can mathematically multiply don't serve any purpose, so we don't multiply them. I could, for example, multiply 18 chopsticks with a magnetic field of two tesla, that would give me 36 chopstick Tesla, but just because that mathematically exists doesn't mean it makes any physical sense. Howard's confusion about multiplication goes so far that he thinks if you multiply a penny with a penny, then, according to the current rules of mathematics and multiplication, that gives you one penny. This is not correct. It would give you a penny squared which isn't a physical thing. But now he has an entire conspiracy theory about how Bank of America miscalculates your pennies. Oh dear. Okay, so he doesn't understand either multiplication or units, which, let me just say, is a bad start for revolutionizing physics. But how does he get from there to rewriting the laws of nature? Well, as I read on, it became apparent that Howard confuses mathematical relations with natural laws. Yes, in physics, we formulate the laws of nature in form of mathematical relations, but that doesn't mean any mathematical relation is a law of nature. Since he thinks that something is wrong with 1 times 1 equals 1, and he thinks that multiplication is a law of nature, he now thinks that physics is wrong. He explains the laws of conservation of energy might as well pack up and move away, because how can a something multiplied by nothing cause the something to disappear? Remember, energy cannot be created or destroyed. That's why there is no law of nature that just multiplies energy by zero. A few pages later, he has concluded that all visible things are composed of the properties of light. This is what the equation E equals mc square is okay. ultimately illustrating, that energy equals mass times the velocity of light squared all things are light. Unfortunately, this is not correct. This equation doesn't apply to light. You see, the full equation is actually E equals the square root of m squared c to the fourth plus the square of the momentum times the second power of the speed of light. If the object you're looking at doesn't move, then the velocity is zero, so the momentum vanishes. That gives you E equals mc squared. But light moves, well, at this speed of light, so the momentum can't vanish. Instead, for light, it's the mass that's zero, so you get E equals P times C. And no, all things cannot be light most trivially because light has no electric charge. On page 102, he then begins a crash course into particle physics and quantum mechanics. That sounds promising, so let's have a look. It's an elaboration based on a lecture about quantum field theory by David Tong, who I'm sure is thrilled to be cited in this groundbreaking work. David is quoted as saying that the idea that the world is made of particles is strictly speaking a lie, because quantum fields are the real building blocks of the universe. Howard seems to think that this is somewhat of a revelation that the world is made of quantum fields and not of particles. 
But what can I say? Yes, the standard model of particle physics, which is half a century old, is a quantum field theory. It is, despite its name, not a theory of particles, but of quantum fields. A quantum field, loosely speaking, tells you how many particles of what type are in which place. So even if there's no particle in one place, there's still the field there that tells you that no particle is there. Howard seems to think there's something wrong with it, because Tong correctly says that the equations can be extremely difficult to solve. So then Howard introduces his new theory, which is that the third power of one is the absolute value of pi. And this is the neutral condition of all visible matter. The rest of the book is basically pictures. He does not make a calculation uh. for any measurement result, but complains that, quote, that's one of the biggest problems in the field of science and mathematics. It goes beyond the fact that it's outrageously cliquish. It's as if they never truly left high school and the silly games of unconscious children pretending to be important adults. In truth, they are just afraid to explore new ideas." End quote. We have a man who wouldn't pass a primary school maths exam, who thinks that lumping together words and images will revolutionize physics. A man who has zero respect for thousands of years of hard-working mathematicians and scientists whose efforts made it possible that you can see him on a screen and listen to him through... Okay, that's where we got to stop it. Um, I believe that we're kind of we're kind of like in a prison right now because we're what in the third dimension and we're not going to be able to get to the fourth and the fifth. I think just in because of our bodies, we're physically trapped, right? So that's why I think it's going to be very interesting to witness AI because I think AI is what in the fourth or at least the fifth dimension. AI can do things which we can only imagine and only dream of. But... I find it very interesting when I started observing the iPhone, right? Because when the iPhone came out, it was this revolutionary new gadget, which everyone was using, right? And I remember as like in the beginning, people were like, why do I need a, a touch screen? Why my phone works, but I was one of the first people to have an iPhone at my school. So I used to show it around and people got to try it and they were like, wow, I'm probably going to buy this, right? And as time went, more and more people got the iPhone. But then I started noticing something. Once they did that big shift, there was almost like a cap to where we could go. And now the, what, the Apple Vision Pro came out and... That's tanking. But I say that to say there is a limit to how much technology that our physical bodies can handle. I think we can't do more than what we have already done. And that is the problem with our mathematics as well, right? We can't do more than what we have already done. So now we are constantly just looping the same loop over and over, over and over. And that's what I believe has happened and that's what I believe is happening and I don't think physically we can do anymore. But anyway guys, leave it in the comment section. Tell me what you guys think. Do you think that Terence Howard is a loony or do you think that he is a genius? I love to hear from you guys. Anyway guys, like, comment and share and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.